Hello and welcome to West Country Wanderings. Welcome to another one of my monthly vlogs here for the month of August 2022. Today we're in West Somerset. I'm going to the little village of Porlock Weir. It was right by the sea. Can't wait to show you that. I've just stopped off here en route to that. I'm in the little village of Nether Stowey. And behind me here is where the house where once the poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge lived between 1797 and 1800, where he wrote the famous poem, The Rhyme of the Ancient Marrier. In fact, this building here is the Ancient Marrier Pub. So why not join me here for another one of my monthly vlogs here on West Country Wanderings. Well, I'm still making my way towards Porlock Weir, which is the other side of Minehead here in West Somerset. And I thought I'd just stop off here at the railway station at Willerton on the West Somerset Railway. I'm not actually going to be covering the West Somerset Railway in the vlog today, but I will be back here to do a full video on the West Somerset Railway in a future adventure here on West Country Wanderings. But while we're here, we'll just have a quick look around the station here at Willerton while it's quiet, because it's still just after eight o'clock here in the morning. Well, talk about picture postcard perfect. Here we are in Porlock Weir in West Somerset. I've got here about nine o'clock. I stopped off, as you saw, a couple of times en route here, but uh, it's still quiet here. A lot of places haven't opened yet. There is a little glass shop here. It seems to be a place that sells oysters. Well, I'm trying to find some that sells a, a hot coffee so I can just wake myself up while I'm waiting for that to happen. I'm just having an explore around this beautiful harbour. And I'll tell you some more about it as we explore around but just while the light's night, I'm just going to get some more shots here first. So I just wanted to tell you a little bit, first of all, about where we are. Well, we're in West Somerset. I've been to Somerset recently, of course, because I went to the East Somerset Railway. And you won't be surprised to know, more famously, there's the West Somerset Railway and we visited the station at Willerton. So I've come close to the town. I didn't go through it, there's like a road that skirts around. It's the A39. I've come off the M5 through Bridgewater on the A39, just skirting around the town, which is the major settlement area of Minehead, most famous, of course, because of the Butlins Holiday Camp there and obviously a holiday resort. So come a few miles from that, you then enter Exmoor proper. This is Exmoor behind me here with the woods there. Absolutely beautiful place. I've come through a village called Porlock, a bit more touristy than, than this place here at Porlock Weir. Porlock Weir is about another mile and a half, mile and three quarters further on. In fact, there's a toll road which avoids the dreaded Porlock Hill, which takes you up and then drops you down into the uh, North Devon place of Linmouth. There is a toll road, in fact there's two toll roads which get you around that. I haven't got into a toll road here but just beyond this if you want to go further west you do need to pay a toll. I'm not sure how much that is, I'll see if I can find out and drop that in below. So you've got two alternatives to go further west from this point here. But yeah, beautiful Bristol Channel there. It's much better than uh, places that are closer to Bristol, like um, Weston and Burnham, in terms of the sea here. It's much more open, you get the sense this is proper sea. And obviously, as you go a bit further around the coast, it's where the Bristol Channel opens up and then becomes the Atlantic Ocean. Now I've just managed to find a nice piece of driftwood just so I can sit down on this beach. As you can see, it's stunning sea. 
And it's a beautiful morning here. Just first of all though, I just wanted to tell you why I'm here today, why Porlock Weir. Well, first of all, an apology on my channel, I do apologize. When I did my vlog last month, I said that there would be some content from either Devon and Cornwall during the course of the month, during the course of August. And well, as you know, there hasn't been. And the reason for that, of course, is because the <laughs> Devon and Cornwall has been so, so busy. But busier than normal in terms of August because people, more people have been staying home because obviously the problems with things like passports and flights and COVID and things like that. And a lot more people have been holidaying, holidaying in the UK, which is obviously a good thing, but it means in terms of logistics, in terms of getting into Devon and Cornwall from where I live in Gloucestershire, it's been really difficult. I caught the train into uh, Portland, well, Weymouth and caught the bus to Portland. And that was extremely busy. And I thought, I really don't fancy catching a bus down to Cornwall because it's just going to be just the same. So I'm going to wait a while until we get into September when the children go back to school and things get a bit quieter. So I will be back in Devon and Cornwall again. But I thought, well, where can I come that's a bit closer to home to give you some sea? Because we haven't had much sea content here on West Country Wanderings. So I've decided here, West Somerset, which is closer to where I live, it's about 85 miles away, which is obviously a lot less than 200 and something if you're going into West Cornwall. And it's a bit easier easier to get to and the roads are le less busier than they are in Devon and Cornwall at the moment. So yeah, this is here, here we are. This is how I've ended up here. But uh, I can't, I can honestly say I'm definitely not disappointed. When I drove into Paul Weir, I thought, yeah, this, this is a good monthly vlog place. I kind of get that vibe. There, there are certain places that are suitable for monthly vlogs and they, they're not going to be towns, obviously, or cities because I need to spend more time interacting with you guys and gals, telling you about the channel, what's coming up, what's been happening in the backstory to some of the videos I've been created and what's going to be happening next month. I can't do that in a busy place, but here it's really quiet and peaceful and it allows me to do just that as well as tell you something about the area which I've arrived at and also give you this backdrop of stunning scenery. Now, Porlock Weir is one of the oldest fishing villages in the entirety of Great Britain and the United Kingdom. In fact, it's over the, a thousand years old. Uh, probably predates that. Uh, I'm not sure if the Romans ever got down here, but I'm sure that uh, the um, ancestors of the people that live here in Somerset probably way predate that. So it's, I say they know that it's been a settlement for a thousand years. Um, from Doomsday Book times, but uh, it certainly predate, predates that in terms of uh, how, how it's shaped and formed. In fact, Porlock uh, is, comes from two separate words, P-O-R and hyphen L-O-C-K, and, and it means protection inside a harbour. And it's exactly what this place is because it sh there is a bit of a natural prote protection because of the way it bends in like a cove on the coast here to protect it from the worst of the weather. But you have that inner harbour here as well. And I'll show you more of that where you've got the boats now, more leisure boats and fishing boats. But they do still harvest oysters here. In fact, there's a shop on the corner that was open early this morning already selling the oysters. So that explains the Porlock part of it, but what about the weir? Where is the weir? Well, it's not actually a weir as such like we've seen on the River Seven when I've been doing the Seven Way, and more about that in a bit. But it's actually because they used to have wooden stakes here down by the harbour, and it caused a bit of a weir, and those wooden stakes were to harvest salmon. Just wanted to explain about what you can see behind me there. That goes towards the village of Selworthy and Selworthy Beacon. And obviously that's part of Exmoor now. Part of a National Trust estate, Holmbeck, Holm, Holm something. I can't quite remember. I'll put that in below. There in Selworthy is a, Selworthy is a beautiful village itself. It's a fantastic place. It's got a lovely tea room in the garden there. But oh, it's fantastic. We will do that another time on, here on West Country Wanderings as we explore, explore uh, further in different places. You've also got Paul Lock itself, which is behind me, immediately behind me. And the beach goes round to a little hamlet called Bossington. And Bossington Beach is just, just there. That's all pebble here. I'm afraid we don't have, I haven't got sand for you today. I've got you the sea, decent bit of the sea as it goes in towards the Atlantic Ocean, but I'm afraid no sand, pebbly beach, but none of the rest of that. Large pebbles, which are more comfortable, I always find, than smaller pebbles to both to walk on and if you want to sit down and just admire that stunning view. But yeah, really, really great here at Porlock Weir.
Now in terms of trade, this is obviously a working harbour, but in days go by, and particularly in the 18th and 19th century, things like flour and corn were also ex were exported here, but also things like bark, because obviously we're surrounded by masses of woodland here, and bark was used in the tanning process. They also imported coal from both South Wales and the Forest of Dean in Gloucestershire. Well, I managed to get my coffee here. Cheers. <laughs> Wonderful. There's great places here to eat. I've actually just got this from a cafe inside an art gallery. Local artists there painting the scenes. And obviously you've got, this is an artist's dream and a photographer's dream as well. I'll be doing some more photography later. So yeah, I'm just chilled out with my coffee here, enjoying the views around the harbour. What I'm thinking of doing next is, uh, once I've had my coffee, is going on a walk there's a five kilometre circular walk which takes in a fascinating church and a beautiful wooded valley. And if I do that walk, I can then join the course of the walk and tell you more about what's been happening here on West Country Wanderings. So I've just left Porlock Weir, making our way, gaining altitude towards Exmoor, in the direction of Exmoor. Colborne's about two, two and a half kilometres. We're following the woodland through a ravine. And then when we come back to Porlock Weir, I'll be hugging more of the coastline. And as we're doing that, I'll be stopping off on the way and telling you a little bit more about what's been happening here on West Country Wanderings. So while I've got this stunning view across there, across the Bristol, the latter part of the Bristol Channel, as it heads into the Atlantic Ocean, I thought I'd start telling you about what's been happening on the channel for the month of August. Well, we had 11 videos in total since the last vlog. And the, uh, the first one was in fact at Much Markle. It was the Much Markle Steam Fair. It's the first type of video I've done at this particular nature. I tend to shy away from doing events because of crowds, noise, all the sort of things I don't particularly like. So what I thought I'd do is I got there early on the Sunday morning. In fact, I arrived at the, the place before it opened, before they opened the gates about half hour before eight. So I think I paid £10 to, to get in there, to get into the showground. And we started off with a tour. The, the first thing I saw was those uh, tractors ploughing in the field, wasn't it? Which was really delightful. And it was a quieter corner of the steam fair to enable me to do the filming there and i really enjoyed going around there and getting you the shots of the steam tractors there and, and of course the many other things that take place in those sort of showgrounds where we had those uh, classic hdv commercial uh, lorries didn't we and also the caravans and the classic motorbikes as well to, to name but a few things and there was lots of storeholders there there was a lady there making classic tractor seats very specialized but very fine art as well so I thoroughly enjoyed doing that, but I only stayed there for a couple of hours. After a couple of hours, I was getting a bit overwhelmed. The, the location was getting busier as more and more people were arriving. But uh, yeah, really enjoyed Much Michael Steam Fair. Now, when I was researching this location late last night before I made the trip early this morning, I was looking at the OS map and I saw that bit where it said Worthy Toll Road and you can see that beautiful thatched arch. I didn't realise it looked like that. It just says Toll Road. I thought that would be mildly interesting. Didn't realise it was going to be that photogenic. I also saw it said two tunnels. And I thought, well, perhaps that's something to do with mining, because obviously they, they had limestone, they had kilns, one of the things they exported from the uh, harbour here at uh, Porlock Weir. 
had no idea it was going to be like the tunnels I've just gone through. I'm not quite sure the purpose for them. It's possible that they were for originally for carriages to pass over the top on the estate here, the Paul Lockweir estate, I think which is owned by the Blathwaite family, and I think it still is. Maybe connections to Dunster as well, that surname rings a bell. I'll check on that. But uh, yeah, they 1600s, they've owned all this land around there. Didn't realize it was gonna be as beautiful this along the walk to Colborne Church. Our next video in the series for the month of August was, well, I think you can summarize this month as being a, a video of differences. There's been lots of different formats that I've tried. I say that was my first foray into doing covering a steam fair this month at Much Markle. And the next video I did was one in my railway series, but it wasn't one where I just either talk about a, f a closed line or a freight line, or I go up to a preserved line like I've done at Gloucestershire, Warwickshire, or indeed most recently at least Somerset Railway, more about which in a bit. I actually covered a miniature railway, and there's a bit of a story about how that happened. I was in Stratford Park near Stroud, not that far, a few miles from, from where I live in Gloucestershire, and I noticed these rails in the park and I took some photographs of them, wasn't quite sure what the deal with it was, posted them on Facebook, and more about Facebook as well later, and it provoked a big reaction from people and they said that yes, it is still open. In fact, it's open, I think it was the last Sunday of the month between April and September. So it's only open like six times of the year. And then it's only like between two and five. So you've got very few opportunities to see this miniature railway at Stratford Park in action. So I thought, hmm, so people are really interested in the photographs of it. Perhaps they'll be interested in me making a video of that. So I rocked up there and did some telephoto shots of the miniature steam and diesel and i think one of them might even be electric um, locos in action on that wonderful scenic trip miniature railway trip which goes around stratford park particularly a wooded section of it and that video seemed to be particularly well received on my channel in the month of august i will be doing another miniature railway one there is one uh, just north of the town of Evesham in Worcestershire there's a large garden center there in fact they i'm not sure if the miniature railway there vale of Evesham Miniature Railway is that indeed owned by the people that own the garden centre there. So hopefully I'll be covering that, if not in September, then probably be in October because people seem to be interested in miniature railways as indeed they are with all types of railways on my channel. Quite a remarkable sight behind me because there's another one of those tolls, tunnel, tolls? We had a toll earlier, not a toll, tunnel that I walked through earlier. This looks like it was a much longer one on a curve, but sadly the roof has collapsed. I don't think it's a recent collapse. And I think part of that is because of the tree growth has pushed the walls in, the tree roots have expanded and they've knocked the top off the tunnel. It's collapsed in. As I said, the original purpose for these tunnels, I don't know. Well, while I've got this collapsed tunnel in the background, I thought I'd just tell you about the third video that we had in the month of August. And again, it was a very different one to what I normally do, which is normally just canals, railways and walks, countryside, cotswolds, beaches and stuff. As I've been visiting, uh, going along the Golden Valley to do the Thames and Seven Canal several times, as you know, more about that again, that in a minute. I've been driving along there through towards the village of Chalford, very pretty village, and I noticed these various bus stops as you go along the main road, and they looked very bright and colourful. Lots of times you go past bus stops and they're usually got broken glass in, or they've been vandalised, got graffiti and etc. But these were different. There was six or seven of them in a line over about a three mile stretch. And I thought I'd just take a closer look at one. In fact, I started off with having a look at the one at Chalford, which is a black and white mural showing you the history of the village there with the, the, the old railway, the canal, the donkeys. It told you the story of the village just in the context of that one bus stop. And I thought, ooh, bus stop video, mm, would it work? So I set up, thought about how I could do it uh, and I decided to do it just by using photographs because you've got a very busy road there so the sound would be useless as far as video would be concerned, it's far too noisy and getting the angles right on video would be again be quite tricky, quite tight spaces using tripods with people walking on pavements etc. So I thought 
do it for photographically and use some music, which is what I did. And that video again seems to have been pretty well received on my channel. I didn't know, no idea how that would go down, but some of the comments were really, really favorable. I said, it's probably not something I'd ever do again. And, uh, but yeah, if you haven't watched that one out, check it out and uh, I'd love to know what you think if you haven't seen it yet, bus stop. Well, I thought I'd take advantage of this seat here as we're climbing up, quite a steep climb through the woods here. I've forgotten the name of the woods, Wellworthy? I'm not sure, I'm gonna put that in below. Brain's not working today, sorry about that. This seat's actually been donated by the Anchor Hotel back in Porlock, we are by the guests. And a very prominent position here, just on the corner. I'm going through a 180 degree bend, so the footpath goes up the contour and then, well, I almost, almost uh, Forgot the name of it, Horseshoe? No, not Horseshoe. Anyway, it goes almost 100, well, then it goes 360, because it's going all the way back up to reduce the gradient on the contour here. But uh, yeah, really, really good to have a breather here. Now, the next video I did was a bit unplanned. I'd had actually a plan to go to the village of Breeden on the banks of the River Avon in Worcestershire. Again, that's somewhere we will go in the future, because it's not least of which because there's a fantastic tithe barn which is owned by the National Trust and we'll have a look at that. You can also see the boats, navigable cool section of the River Avon going up and down between Tewkesbury and Stratford-on-Avon at that point. As I was getting to Breeden I happened to drive through Upton on Severn and I noticed the town was looking stunning. The flowers were out. Uh, they'd had a, recently had a music festival, a jazz and blues festival. There was lots of people in the town but it was just looking Incredible, really. It was a hot day because I thought, oh, I'll just go and get an ice cream. I popped my car up, wandered in to get an ice cream, thought, this is too nice a place to not do a video about it. The reason I was in two minds, because we will be back at Upton on Seven again when we do the Seven Way, but I don't think I'll be able to get it looking as good as what it did on that particular day in August when I was there at the end of that festival because the flowers, just everything about it, the bunting, the flags, there was a brilliant atmosphere to the town just by the banks of the River Severn. And that video, I think, is the second most uh, watched video of August on my channel. It's gone down really well. Again, it was mainly a photographic one. I did some video sh montages, just the snippets of uh, walking through the town. I Very rarely do I do pieces to camera, talking to the camera right on a high street, but uh, there I did. <laughs> Not something that'll probably happen too often on my channel, West Country Wanderings but uh, I did feel comfortable enough to do it there, a little bit anyway, and I showed you the, the pepper pot remains of the original church, and that stunning spire church with the yellow cotswold stone there in Upton on Seven on Worcestershire, and say that uh, video was the second most popular one for the month of August. So while I've got the South Wales coast along there just behind me, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the next video on my channel for August, and that was of course Seven Way Six. And oh wow, boy, was this quite a walk. It was uh, 26 kilometers, this one. And the problem with this particular video was the logistics of doing it in terms of getting there and getting back. I actually drove to Welshpool, and then I started off the walk which of course started along the Montgomery Canal, which we've now said goodbye to uh, as we've gone into Seven Way Seven, which is more about that, that in a bit. And I made my way to the village of Crewe Green. In fact, the final shot in that video is me walking from Wales to England. The difficulty then was getting back to my car at Welshpool. The last bus finished in the afternoon. Have you seen that video? Long gone. So you have to get to the main route between Shrewsbury and Welshpool, and that's a place called Halfway House, which we come across again in Seven Way Seven. And the problem with that wasn't so much the bus from Halfway House to back to Welshpool, that was straightforward. It was the physical getting to Halfway House from Crew Green because of all the footpaths that have been blocked off. And I had to make my way on a big detour. I, I worked out I could probably do it in about five and a half kilometers to get to Halfway House, but it ended up about seven or eight because I had to end up just going on the roads because no footpaths in that area are open, as you'll see if you've seen Seven Way Seven. Anyway, I'm here just enjoying the beautiful views across the sea before we get to our final destination for today, which is Colborne Church. So 
So we're now at Colbone Church, supposedly the smallest church in England. Just going to have a look inside there shortly. While I'm waiting to go inside, just tell you about two of the videos that we had this month. We had Chastleton House in Oxfordshire, and you could probably say that was like a, a normal sort of video for me, but there was nothing normal about the inside of that stunning stately home there in Oxfordshire, because it had been left as it was in the 1950s. I then did probably the video that I enjoyed most, both creatively and the day itself visiting it, and that was the Isle of Portland. I think the reason I enjoyed that so much is because I think it's whetted my appetite to go back there again. That stunning island just off the Dorset coast connects obviously with that narrow strip of land. And I really enjoyed the photography I did with that and playing around with the uh, special effects as well. But the day there uh, was just wonderful. I had a stunning day. It was a bit too warm for my liking and the train was a little bit too crowded, but uh, I really enjoyed that. And we will be back on the Isle of Portland, West Country Wanderers again soon. Well, it was really difficult filming by that church because several people arrived to have a look around it. It's a beautiful spot. It is quiet and I thought my voice would really carry as well. So I didn't want to do a piece to camera there. So it's dedicated to St. Buno, B-E-U-N-O. And he actually came from Paris in Wales, right next to the River Wye, a place which, we're, of course, we're familiar with from some of the other videos that we've done on the Severn Way stunning place inside obviously it is really really small but it's well worth visiting and making the trek to there from Porlock Weir so I'll just tell you about a couple of other videos that I landed on my channel first one was early one summer morning and this came out more than by accident design for wanting something to do during the heat wave we had that really really hot weather didn't we we have fact, we've had two hot spells now in August which has really hampered my filming and my ability to get further away uh, from where I live to make videos further away. It has been really difficult to do that because of the hot weather. And so, because I was like housebound, if you like, I thought I'd get up early one morning while it was cooler. Well, it wasn't that cool actually, um, to, to make a video there on Minchin Hampton Common, which is a natural trust common, just to see the village awakening, the near life, nearby village of Amberley awakening on early summer's morning. And uh, it was old school photography. I did it in a naturalistic style. It was all tripod work. There was no music to it. There's no fancy editing. It was just using a telescopic lens, uh, seeing things at a distance, obviously like the cows and the people walking their dogs. And uh, yeah, you had that golden light there as well. And uh, I really enjoyed making that uh, one. Cotswold walks number nine we did. I caught the train to Kemble in the Cotswolds and I did a circular walk, which took in the villages of Tarleton and Coates and we also passed over by the Sapperton Tunnel and I hope to do the Sapperton Tunnel one which will be Stradwater and Thames and Seven Canal update number 11 with you in September. I can't promise that but fingers crossed because there's going to be quite a bit of work involved in doing that one but I uh, hope to bring that in September if not we'll be in October. Well, I ride back in Porlock Weir. Sadly, I couldn't do much pieces to camera because what I didn't explain is that route to Colborne Church actually follows the southwest coast paths. And obviously, being August, there's a lot of walkers out and about. But delightful walk that it is, though. I would just wanted to wrap up the two final videos to tell you about what's happened on the channel on West Country Wanderings for the month of August. And they were the East Somerset Railway. Now, that one has been the most popular, the most viewed. I think at the time of recording it's 360 views. That's the most viewed video on my channel this month. Been really, really popular one that I enjoyed my day there in uh, Cranmore in East Somerset. As I say, in September, I hope to do West Somerset. I won't be able to cover the whole of the West Somerset Railway because it is obviously so long. It's 26 miles, I believe from Bishop Lydiard to Minehead. So we'll just pick a couple of stations and uh, 
just watch some steam trains come in and out. That's what, how I thought I'd do that one. But yeah, East Somerset's a much smaller operation there, but really delightful. I've really enjoyed my day there. And finally, we I wrapped up uh, the month of August with Severn Way 7. And that was the one that took us, well, we left miles, didn't we? We crossed over the Melverley Bridge well into England now. Uh, to finish that one at a place called Montford Bridge, I hope to be back there next few days to do the final stretch into the magnificent town of Shrewsbury on the banks of the River Severn. And that was the month of August here on West Country Wanderings. Oh, stunning place here. Really enjoyed my day here at uh, Porlock Weir. So it also has given us an introduction to the National Park of Exmoor, because part of today's walk went through National, the Exmoor National Park. And I certainly do hope to cover more walks and places and villages in Exmoor over, well, the coming period on West Country Wanderings. Before I wrap up today's video and give you some shout outs, I just wanted to go through the number of nines. Yes, the number nine, that comes up twice. That's two big thank yous, really. First of all, subscriptions. I've just passed over the 900 subscription mark. As I record this today, towards the end of August, just, well, I think I'm on about 920. I know it bounces up and down slides, so about 920. So thank you very much if you have been a subscriber. Now, some of you have been a subscriber since the very beginning, way back in February 2021. I know that's only about 18 months ago. It seems a long time ago now, some 226 videos later, something like that. The other big number, apart from the 900 plus subscribers, is the number of views. And again, thank you very much. I've passed over the 90,000 views mark. In fact, I'm actually on 92,000 views, so I'm heading up to 100,000 views now. So again, thank you for any, each of any one of you that have watched my videos over the past 18 months. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you. Now, this time towards the end of my monthly vlogs on my channel, West Country Wanderings, I always do some shout outs, people that have supported me through the previous months. And I'd like to mention some different names. I tend to mention some uh, similar names that crop up that have been supporting my channel, but ones that I haven't mentioned before and that I'm aware of. First of all, a gentleman called Michael Pelling, who lives in Poland. He's been going through all my videos, watching them all. Really appreciate that, Michael. has been a, put a really detailed and very thoughtful and heartfelt comment up against every single one of my videos from the very, very beginning. And I, I can only thank you for that, Michael. And I really do appreciate it. I uh, hope it's all as well with you. Thank you. Second person I'd like to thank is a lady called Faith G, who's currently in the process of watching all my videos. I think she's watched oh, probably about 60, 70 of them, probably more than that. And putting, love, again, lovely comments. She's just started watching the Cotswold Way series. And uh, yeah, so thank you, Faith, very, very much for, for that. I really, really do appreciate that. Another person I'd like to thank is Ted and Carol Collins. They live in Leicestershire, previously from Gloucestershire. And Ted's actually sent me some old photographs of places along the River Severn, which I will be incorporating into my videos as we work further south down through Shropshire and into Worcestershire and then into Gloucestershire. So Ted and Carol Collins, thank you very much. Another channel, YouTube channel I'd like to thank is Lionel and Mary Travels. Lionel does uh, some railway ones looking at old railways, which is really, really good. And also he has done some videos exploring different areas. I think it's around the Hampshire area often comments on my videos, put some lovely comments on. So Lionel Mary, thank you much and good luck with your channel too. I must catch up with some of your videos as well. So that's some excellent railway ones looking at uh, disused railways. Thanks very much. Next channel is Donna's Adventures. Donna lives in Canada. I think, is it Alberta? That could be wrong. I'll put it in below. Can't remember the exact uh, state where she lives. She does, if you like natural history, like I do, you will really, really enjoy Donna's channel, Donna's Adventures. She does some focuses on particular aspects of nature in Canada. She does trekking and walks. And when she'll see what like wildflowers out in the wild, she'll always annotate it with the full name and the, name, the Latin name as well and the italics. There aren't many YouTubers who go to the trouble of doing that. 
Also, she'll come across birds and butterflies and moths. She'll do the same with those. Really, really, I love her style of presenting, very laid back. Uh, really, really good. So Donna, excellent. And thank you very much for commenting on my channel too. Final one for this month is Don Salmon Music. Don runs his own channel. He writes music, particularly music, religious music and hymns. He also will put lyrics to hymns and vice versa. You'll see what I mean. Just check his channel out. I'll put it in the bottom there. So a really creative guy. Put some lovely words to the comments on my videos too. So Don, thank you very, very much. So that is it. That wraps up the whole of the vlog for this month. I hope you enjoyed August on West Country Wanderings. I just wanted to tell you about a few things that are coming up on the channel. Obviously, we will have Seven Way Eight coming up. I do apologize, I haven't had any canal content. We did have a couple of railway things, railway series, miniature railway, East Somerset Railway. We will have West Somerset Railway coming up. Haven't had any railway ones. I may get update number 11 in September, but maybe in October because of the work involved in it. Sorry, it's getting windy. I do apologize for the wind noise. So exposed beach. But I do hope to do a couple of uh, canal ones. One on the Gloucestershire, sorry, Herefordshire and Gloucestershire Canal. And also I hope to walk, well I will walk, the entire length of the Droitwich Canal from the town of Droitwich Spa to where it meets the River Severn. So that's canal one coming up. There'll be another Cotswold Walks one coming up as well. And there will be definitely some canal, uh, some canal, there will be canal, yes. There'll be Cornwall and Devon content coming up in September too. So look out for that. Thank you very much for watching my channel. Thank you very much for your lovely comments, subscribing and liking and sharing. I really, really do appreciate it. Hope to see you on the channel again very, very soon. All the best for now. Take care. Bye-bye.